All right, let's talk about the History API. So currently, I have a blank web page here, just with a couple of titles. If you click on this arrow, you can see that there is some history for this page. There are other pages that I have visited in the past. So I don't want to go anywhere. I'm going to stay on this page for the moment. I'm going to go into my HTML, my JavaScript here. Uh, inside the HTML, I simply have a div where I'm going to be placing the content. In my JavaScript, uh, and the, by the content I mean just any messages from my JavaScript that I want to display on the screen. I've added a simple function here where I can pass in a string and it's going to be added as a paragraph inside of this div, just to make it easier to output things. Alright, now to understand the History API, there's actually quite a bit of content here, so I'm going to break this up into two different videos. This is part one, and we're going to talk about the two main objects that make up the History API. There is a History object, which is inside of the Window object, and there is a Location object, which is inside the Window object. Because they are directly inside of the Window object, we can actually skip writing Window if we wanted to access anything. So I could just type location dot and then you can see there's a long list of things that we can get at here in the code complete. Probably the most common thing that you are going to be using is the href and as it says here this is the entire URL so the entire URL everything that would be inside of the location bar so in your browser up at the top everything that's typed here that is your URL so that is the location.href property. And if I pass this to my show function, come back and refresh the page, there we go. There's the entire URL appearing. Now we will um, append location.href just as we get more things in here. I want to make this easier to read. There we go. Location.href is that whole thing. Now there are different parts to every URL. Not every part will be in every URL, but it's important to understand what these parts are. First of all, we have the protocol. Are you using HTTP? Are you using HTTPS? These are the protocols that define how the information is passed between the server and the client. This is the domain name. There is a small part at the front here. This is known as the subdomain. So. Typically, when you were pointing it at this part of it, you're talking about a computer somewhere on the internet. So example.com, this is a server. Then, this can often just be pointing to a folder. Or there may be a series of network servers, maybe there's some load balancing software that's directing things to different locations. The settings file for your web server is directing this to a different computer on the network where the server exists. but you can just think of this as a folder somewhere on the computer and this denotes the computer. The domain can also be represented as an IP address very often. If we are talking about our own computer, this is known as localhost. Localhost is the name given to every computer in the world. If I jump over to here, you can see 127.0.0.1. That is the IP address for every computer. It's known as the loopback address. So if you point to this and you have a web server running, you will be serving web pages off of your own computer. And the name localhost is just a word to represent this. So this IP address or this localhost, it kind of plays the same role as doing this part right here. So protocol, domain, subdomain, and this part here is called the superdomain. Right here, after this, but before the slash, is the port number. So which port number? You can think of them as phone lines. So imagine one of those old switchboards. You see the pictures of uh, the women sitting behind the great big panel with all the plugs, and they're plugging the wires in to connect the phone calls. In your computer, there are 65,000 and change ports, and your computer can use any one of those ports to talk to another computer. Or between programs on your computer, they can share a port to talk to one another. 
80 is the default port number for HTTP and we are going to be communicating over port 80 by default. So if this is not expressed and you're using HTTP, that's the port number that you're using. We can also stick inside of here username and password. So username at and then this domain or username colon password at this domain. So you can actually do FTP through the browser if you want. Or if you're trying to log into a protected folder somewhere on a server, you can specify the username and password. And those are parts of the location. There is a location.username, a location.password. There's a location.protocol, a location.port. There's a location.path name, which will be this. There is a uh, location dot Search, and this is the query string. Let's see, I'll append this into here. It's not going to affect anything that's running. You can see it comes up as part of the full UR, uh, full href, the full URL. But if I want to access that part, search is the name in JavaScript, the search string. There we go. And you see it includes the question mark. This is location.search. Um, sometimes you will see a hash value. So if I, oops, there we are, location.hash. This is like if I come in here and I try to append output, hash sign output, this means that I want to go to history.html and I want to find the thing that has the ID output inside of here. And there's my hash and it'll include the query string as part of it, but hash starts with the pound sign right here. This is an ID somewhere on the page, and if I had a ton of content and this ID was somewhere down below the bottom of the screen here, the browser would actually scroll down to that part of the page and show me the thing that had the ID output. This is how those uh, back to top links that you've seen on web pages work. They're just, they'll have a link somewhere on the page with the ID top, they'll place it up at the top of the screen, and then when you click on the link, it's appending the hash and taking you up there. Okay, so we have things in the location object that represent every possible part of the URL that you're looking at, everything that's in the location bar. Now the history object, the history object is what we see in the browser when we are looking at this. This is the history. So it's like a list or an array of all the elements that exist inside of there. So these are all the pages that you visit. When you click on a link and go to a new page, when you type something new into the location bar of your browser, what you are doing is you are actually adding to that array. So we can take a look at history. Um, well, actually, here this is what I'll do. We will say history dot go. And then we can put a number in here. If I want to step back three steps in the history, I put a negative three inside there. When I refresh this, boom, there, I went back. And now the forward works. I jump back to three elements. If I click on here, back to my original point in the history. Now it's not rerunning the script because that would just kind of put me into a loop to go back to the page. So we can use go to move forwards or backwards with positive or negative numbers. We can use history back. We can do history dot forward. I got an extra dot inside there. These are methods that exist that allow us to travel backwards or forwards inside that array. We can tell history that we want to Reload. Oh, it's not. Um, 
not happy with that. History.replace, we can do that one as well. And we can put in a URL. And I should put this in quotation marks. Well, it's not happy with either of these. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is still part of the location. Yes, this is the location version of these. So history.go. My apologies. History.go is stepping backwards or forwards through the history array, back and forward, going one step forward, one step back. There's location.reload. We'll tell the page to reload. Location.replace. Location.replace is the one that will take us to another one. So reload reloads the current page. Um, assign is another one that will uh, replace the current page. So if I refresh now, there we go. And it jumped to Google for us because we said this is the address we want to go to. So that's where it jumped. And Google did the redirect from .com to .ca. Now, Another property that we have inside of here, inside of the history object, is state. And state is data that's been passed along or properties that we pass along. And we're going to be looking at, in the next video, some methods that we can use. Yeah, there we go. We should comment this out so we don't jump to the next page. Yeah, okay. Let's relaunch. When you're in brackets and you do the live preview, make sure that you are on the HTML side of things. Yeah, it's had an error because I was trying to launch the JavaScript. There we go. So now it's relaunching. I selected the HTML. History.state was null. So all that just to see this. Because there was no data that was passed along from the previous page to this one, history.state is going to be null. But this is something that we're going to take advantage of in the next video. We're going to be looking at push state, replace state, um, hash change, pop state. There's a whole bunch of things that we can do to actually um, mimic the browser's behavior so we can replace the contents that are on the page without actually traveling to a new page. We can intercept the events for navigation and redirect the page or reload things or use Ajax events to go and fetch things. And inside of here, the methods that we're going to be looking at in the next video, history.pushState. And you can see down here the DOM window provides access to the browser's history through the history object. Okay, what does that mean? It means that with push state, we're going to be adding things into that history array. So when you click on the arrow, click and hold on the arrows inside the browser, you get to see the, the history of everything. Push state allows us to put something into there and change what's written in the location bar without actually going anywhere. And then along with that, there is a history.replace state. And replace state does the same thing, except it replaces the current entry in the history API, or in the history array, rather. So we're going to be looking at those as well as uh, the hash change and pop state event in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any uh, questions, please leave them in the comments.